Yes, a very good morning. Right, so let's continue with our discussion on the MCQs as per the ICAI module. Right, yesterday we seen up to chapter number four, the special aspects of auditing in an automated environment. Right, so now coming to the MCQs in the chapter number five. Right, I hope you've seen the MCQ video, right, for the first four chapters which we discussed yesterday. Okay, right now coming to chapter number 5, right, which as per the ICAI module is regarding the company audit, the company accounts and audit. Right, reopening of accounts on court or tribunal order, right, section 130 of the Companies Act states that a company shall not reopen its books of account and not recast its financial statements unless an application in this regard is made by the central government, the income tax authorities, the SEBI and any other statutory regulatory body or authority or any person concerned and any order is made by the yes, court of a competent jurisdiction or the tribunal to the effect that. Right, those of you would have realized that this is probably some formatting error by ICAI site. Right, this is not relevant in the question. So the question starts from here. JN Limited has an annual turnover of 350 crore and has been into losses for the last two years. Right, has everybody made a note that this is not a part of the question? The question ideally starts from here. JN Limited. Right, has an annual turnover of 350 crore and has been into losses for the last two years. The operations of the company are good. Due to some technology changes, the company started facing competition and hence started incurring the losses. The company plans to revive in the next one to two years with the improvements in its processes. During the year 2019, the management of the company came across certain transactions related to the financial year 2018, which were erroneously missed to be accounted for. This would result into losses and hence the management is considering to take this to the right financial year and for that purpose to reopen its accounts for the financial year ended 31st March 2018. Please advise. Right, so the question is regarding the reopening of accounts. So probably the person who would have prepared the question, he would have kept that reopening of accounts nearby to it and later on say in the editing it was left out to be deleted. Right, so last year there was an error, yes, erroneously missed to be accounted for certain transactions in 2018 and now the management is considering to take this to the right financial year and for that purpose to reopen its accounts for 2018. Who is considering? The management is considering. Right, the position of the management is correct. The action of the management is correct. However, the reason behind reopening the accounts of last year does not seem to be correct. The action of the management would have been correct had it been advised by the auditors of the company for the same management, right? Should have taken from Parai for and for the same management should have taken approval from SEBI and the action of the management is not correct. Okay. So now thankfully over here only they've mentioned little bit about the reopening of accounts. When can a company reopen its accounts? It says it shall not reopen its accounts unless and until an application in this regard is made by. Right, any person and the court and the court has also and an order is passed by a court of competent jurisdiction or the tribunal. Now in the given case neither an application has been made by any of these authorities nor any order has been posted by, passed by the court or the tribunal. So can the company go for a reopening of accounts? No, rather it should be accounted for as a prior period item into the current year financial statements as per the accounting standards. Right, so which is the correct view? Right, three views say position of management is correct, right, action of management is correct, the action of the management would have been corrected, but these three are coming into the similar category, no, right, so the correct option over here is going to be four, the action of the management is not correct, okay, right, coming to question number two. Remy Limited was set up initially as a private limited company. Subsequently, it got converted into a public company. The company's management has plans of expansion, but the business was not growing in an organic manner. Therefore, the management decided to acquire the competitors. During the financial year 2019, the company acquired two companies in India and in France in September 2018 and January 2019 respectively. The company controls both of these companies as per the criteria laid down in the Companies Act 2013 as well as the applicable accounting standards. The management started discussions with the auditors regarding the audit, wherein it was also pointed out by the auditors that the management should have also prepared consolidated financial statements if they want. Management needs your advice on the same. 
right the management started discussions with the auditor regarding the audit wherein it has also appointed the wherein the auditors have pointed out to the management that they should also prepare consolidated financial statements okay management must prepare the consolidated financial statements as per the requirements of the companies act management has a choice not to prepare cfs but should go for that considering that its true performance and financial position can then be demonstrated okay management could have prepared consolidated financial statements if the acquired companies would have completed at least one year post acquisition management must prepare consolidated financial statements but it should include only the company acquired in india what stories they are making ha huh, it may it has a choice not to prepare okay no you are bound by law there is no choice of preparing cfs as such could have prepared had it completed one year no no sir they are just giving a lame excuse over there management must prepare only for the company acquired in india no even a foreign company you need to prepare the consolidated right so which is the correct option over here a management must prepare the consolidated financial statements as per the requirements of the companies act 2013 okay right coming to question number 3 k private limited has been providing marketing support services to its parent company based out of ireland everybody with me paying attention okay right k private limited has been providing marketing support services to its parent company based out of ireland the company's operations are not large and have remained stable over the last few years recently the parent company was acquired by another company and the new investor wants to reassess whether the company in india should continue or should be shut down considering the legal compliances also oh, india known for its legal compliances okay It was advised to the new investor that the company should be converted into LLP. In December 2018, the new management decided that they should get the company converted into LLP and also discuss that matter with their statutory auditors. Right, the management is expecting that the LLP conversion would get completed by February 2019 and wants that the auditor should audit the financial statements of the LLP at the year end because conversion is only an administrative process and hence it would not impact their work. Okay, so one company got converted into LLP, and now they are telling auditor, auditor, you do the audit only after it becomes an LLP, as conversion is only an administrative process, and hence it would not impact their work. Right, the management would need to get the financial statements audited from a new auditor appointed by CNAG. Oh, now who did they get here? Yesterday in the questions they were bringing ICAI. Today they said CNAG. In case of LLP, look at the combination: Comptroller and Auditor General of India. In case of a limited liability partnership, okay. the management would need to appoint new auditor and the new auditor can audit llp at year end in one go both for a period it was a company and then when it became an llp the auditor of the company should audit the company before its conversion and then the new auditor for the llp would audit the llp separately so first till the time company company audit when it becomes an llp llp audit okay right the auditor of the company should audit the company before its conversion and then the auditor for llp would audit the llp separately but this is a choice available to the auditor generally i think the generally yeah, not always but whether is a choice available to the auditor that answer generally is not the correct one right so cnag to out of question Okay, then what does it say? The management would appoint the new auditor and get it audited in one go. No one go over here, right? Two goes. Then an auditor of the company should audit the company before the conversion, and then the new auditor for LLP would audit it separately, right? And there is a choice available to the auditor. No, there is no choice available because LLP audit, company audit required by their respective laws, right? Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Where is your attention? Hmm. Where is your attention right now? You're listening to other sounds. You're thinking about food. You're thinking about how much time of the video. Where is your thought? Nowhere, no. Yes, you're paying attention, no, to what I'm telling. Wonderful. A J Private Limited was incorporated on 21st of March 2018 and has limited operation. However, the capital induction in the company was huge because it would be capital intensive. The company is in the process to set up a plant in Karnataka which should be completed by 31st May 2019. The company's management prepared its financial statements for 2019. The auditor were also called to start the work in April 2019. The auditors would be able to complete their work by 
31st of May 2019 and accordingly would issue their audit report by first week of June 2019 as per the plan agreed with the management. The auditors have some observations related to the preparations of the financial statements which are not in compliance with Schedule 3 and most importantly the point related to the capitalization of the plant as property plant and equipment in the financial year 2019. Please suggest which of the following statement would be correct. Right. So the matter is regarding the capitalization of the plant as property plant and equipment in 2019 and what have they given on the top? Regarding the property, plant and equipment, the company is in the process to set up a plant in Karnataka which should be completed by 31st of May. That means as on 31st of March, it is going to be capital work in progress, CWIP. Because is it completed as on 31st of March? No. The compliance of Schedule 3 shall start from 1st April 2019 for this company as per the company's accounts the rules 2016. So it says 31st March, no Schedule 3 to be followed. Okay. The compliance of Schedule 3 should start from first financial period. However, some exemptions will be applicable as per company accounts rule 2014. There should be full compliance of Schedule 3 and plant should be kept as the WIP as per Schedule 3. There should be full compliance of Schedule 3 and plant should be shown as PPE as per Schedule 3. Right. So, one, they are putting it on the company account amendment rule? No. Company account rule? No. It should be shown as PPE? No. It should be shown as the property. It should be shown as the capital work in progress. Right. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Coming to question number five. Wonderful MCQs created by ICAI. An amazing piece of work done. Right? They are like a standard. So rather than looking at n number of MCQs, which you should look into for practice purpose, but on priority basis, all the MCQs which have been issued by ICAI, they are masterpieces. Right? You have to study them well. SHRD Private Limited is engaged in the business of software and consultancy. The company has an annual turnover of 2000 crore but its profit margins are not very good as compared to the industry standards. For the financial year 2019, the company proposed appointments of its statutory auditors at its general meeting. However, the remuneration was not finalized. The statutory auditors completed the engagement formalities including the engagement letter between the company and the auditors and it was decided that the engagement letter be signed without fee. Right, that is with the clause that fee to be mutually decided. Please provide your views on this. Right, so fee not yet decided to be decided in the future. Such an engagement letter is not valid. Engagement letter with such an arrangement is valid. Engagement letter should specify the fee of the last year if applicable. If the fee for the current year is not yet finalized at the time of signing of the engagement letter. So it says not this year fee, last year fee you have to put. Should specify the fee of last year. And D. Engagement letter should specify 10% increase in the fee as compared to the last year as per the norms of ICAI in case the fee is not finalized at the time of signing of the engagement letter. When you are necessarily bringing ICAI into picture. Right. Then it should mention last year fee if current year fee is not decided. No. Now such an engagement letter is not valid or an engagement letter with such an arrangement is valid. Right. So the engagement letter with such an arrangement is valid that we will decide it mutually later on. Right. So that completes the MCQs for chapter number 5. Are you all with me? Right. So now coming to the chapter number 6. Right, just a moment, I'm just to reaching to that file. Right, audit reports, right, coming to question number six as per the uh, chapter number six as per the ICAI module. Are you all paying attention? Right, yes, question number one. KPI limited and I hope you've already seen the earlier eight series which I've told you so it is not you know to increase my uh, very honestly not to increase the views of my channel or of my particular YouTube video but actually it will give you a very good practice for MCQs. Right, I'd already told you before and only that before yesterday's MCQs itself you should have seen those eight. Right, so those eight plus yesterday's video which I uploaded, that is the ninth one and the today's one which I will be uploading, that's going to be the tenth one. Right, so I think that should cover around some 200 odd MCQs put together, which is a good enough fair amount of practice for you to be done. Okay, 
KPI Limited is a joint venture of KPI Inc., a company based in US, and OPQ Limited is a company based in Japan. Here, and are referred to as the JP Partners. Right? KPI Limited is a joint venture of a company based in US and another company based in Japan. KPI Limited was registered in India. So this joint venture of US and Japan was registered in India and is operating as a market support company for KPI Inc. All the costs of KPI Limited are incurred in India and the entire revenue of KPI Inc. is generated in USD. Right? It is registered in India and is operating as a support marketing support company for KPI Inc. All the costs of KPI Limited are incurred in India and the entire revenue of KPI Inc. is generated in USD. The entire funding requirement of KPI Limited are taken care of by the JV partners. Since KPI Limited is based in India, hence it is also required to get its financial statements audited. Okay. The company appointed new auditors for the audit of the financial statements for 2019 and after doing all the appointment formalities wherein auditors are confirmed their eligibility for appointment regarding the including their eligibility for appointment as including independence. The statutory auditors have completed their audit and did not come up with any significant observations. Management of KPI Limited was very pleased with the working style of the auditors. When the auditors issued their final audit report, the management observed that the auditors did not state anything related to their compliance in respect of ethical requirements regarding independence, etc. Further, the audit report was also silent on the requirement relating to auditors' communication with TCWG in respect of matters relating to the planned scope and timing of the audit and any significant findings. Okay, the management requested that the auditor should revisit their report and should include these points in the report. So the management is knowing more than the auditor. Even auditor does not know that these things are required as per the contents of the audit report of SA 700 in the audit report. And how you've complied with ethical requirements including independence, matters communicated with TCWG. And ethical requirements including independence that comes in the basis for opinion and matters communicated to TCWG that comes in the auditor's responsibility paragraph. Right? The management requested that the auditor should revisit their report and should include these points in their report. However, as per the auditor, all these communications were already completed by them and hence they were not required to form part of the audit report. Okay? On the basis of the above mentioned facts, please suggest which of the following should be correct. The auditing standards do not require the auditor to comment on the point which the management is requesting that is ethical requirements or matters relating to the planned scope and timing of the audit or any significant finding. However, if the auditor wants to include that on the basis of his agreed terms, of agreed terms with the management, he may do so. The auditing standards require the auditor to comment on the points. Right, which the management is requesting, that is ethical requirements or matters relating to the planned scope and timing of the audit or any significant findings, etc. That is matters communicated to TCWG. Hence, the auditor should issue the rectified report. Okay, good one. The ethical requirements are already completed by the auditor at the time of appointment itself. Since the audit is completed, there is no need to comment on the planned scope and timing of the audit. Since there are no significant findings, so this communication is also not possible. Hence, the auditors need not revisit their report. Okay. Right. The ethical requirements are already completed by the auditor at the time of appointment itself and there are no significant findings. Hence, there is no need to comment on these points. However, the auditor should state that they communicate with TCWG regarding the planned scope and timing of the audit. Therefore, the auditor should revisit their report. Okay. So, so much of theory and content we have read. Okay, right, so the auditing standards do not require, no, 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 I told you, no, don't make anybody else the culprit. Now they are saying, no, no, auditing standards don't require. The auditors need not revisit their report, the auditors should revisit their report, but only subjectively, you know, ethical requirements are already completed, so there is no need to include, but matters communicating to TCWG, this they could state, no, right, all is required to be stated in the report. Right? So, the auditing standards require the auditor to comment on the points which the management is requesting, that is ethical requirements and also, also the matters to be communicated to TCWG. 
right so which is the correct option over here b is the correct option right so here they are putting the wrong blame on the standards on auditing the auditing standards do not require the auditor to comment which is not right okay right coming to question number 2 LMN and Company LLP is a large form of chartered accountants having its offices based in Delhi, Pune, Chandigarh and Bangalore. Right the firm has staff of around 300 with 28 partners. The firm has also created various departments for various services that it offers statutory audit, risk advisory, mergers and acquisition, indirect tax and direct tax where dedicated teams are per working who are specialized in those fields. right the firm is also considering to create departments on the basis of industry sector so that the staff can become specialized and also is or into specific industries as the same would help in the objective of the firm that is to offer the best quality service to its various clients okay statutory audit department of the firm has 13 partners across various offices in india out of which six are based out of based in delhi office The audit team of one of the prestigious client KSH Limited has concluded that or they are or that audit where audit partner was AD Jain. As per the agreed timelines, the financial statements and the audit report were planned to be signed on 30th of June. However, on 29th of June, AD Jain was required to move out of India due to some exigency and would be back to India after a month's time. He was also not accessible during this period. The management of KSH Limited discussed the matter with another partner of the audit firm SK Gupta who eventually signed the audit report on 30th of June 2019 even though he was not a part of the audit team which was involved in the field work we would like to understand your views in respect of this matter right so one partner of the firm he could not sign the report on his behalf another partner of the firm partner not employee you know another partner of the firm has signed the audit report again as a word of caution i'm trying to tell you over here yes i want to tell you over here that sometimes it may happen that when you're reading the mcq for the first time you're not able to get a complete view or understanding of the case study or the story that they are making but please keep it in mind we don't have to do the phd of each and every point which is there in the case study finally what we want from the entire case study is regarding what are the four options and what is the question exactly regarding what and you know, only for that context we need to look into the case study right so in the first reading whatever you understand you understand you don't understand let it be let it be a preliminary understanding don't read and read and read again without reading the options so you read it once whatever level of understanding great now read the four options and now related to the options what you require from the case study that much part you go to it again okay because otherwise you'll spend a lot of time you know maybe you might end up spending some one hour or so you know only in the mcqs in the exam right so we also have to deal with the other 70 marks of the paper also right so be on the move be very you know proactive in the paper right So the management in such a case should have waited for AD Jain to come back and then get the report signed. The audit report in this case would be considered to be invalid. You should wait. You know you should not hurry. They are saying, S K Gupta signed the audit report considering the client was prestigious for the firm, which was unethical. They say no. You should have waited. This is unethical. Okay, signing of the audit report as per the agreed timelines by S K Gupta was fine as he was also the audit partner of the firm. right signing of the audit report by any other person interferes with the concept of clarity of responsibility interferes with the concept of clarity of responsibility right so which is the correct option over here c is the correct option signing of the audit report as per the agreed timelines by sk gupta was fine as he was also the audit partner of the firm right question number 3 RBJ Limited is a listed company engaged in the business of software and is one of the largest company operating in the sector in India. The company's annual turnover is INR 40000 crore with profit of INR 5000 crore. Due to the nature of the business and the size of the company, the operations of the company are spread out in India as well as outside India. Outside India the company is focusing more on the US and European market and the company has been able to establish its good reputation in these markets as well During the course of the audit the audit team spent significant time on the audit of revenue by it be it planning execution or conclusion The audit team for this engagement is generally very big that is a team of approximately 70 to 80 members 
the company's contracts with its various customers are quite complicated and different. The efforts towards audit of revenue also involve significant involvement of senior members of the audit team, including the audit partner. Okay. After completion of the audit for 2019, the audit partner was discussing significant matters with the management wherein he is also communicated to the management that he plans to include revenue recognition as a key audit matter in his audit report. The management was quite surprised to understand this from the auditor and did not agree with revenue recognition to be shown as a key audit matter in the audit report. As per the management, the auditors didn't have any modification and such a matter getting reported as a key audit matter would not go down well with various stakeholders and would significantly impact the financial positions of the company in the market. The auditors were not able to convince the management in respect of this point and there was a difference of opinion. You are requested to give your views in respect of this matter. Okay. Right? The concern of the management is valid for such a large size company, such type of a matter getting reported as key audit matter is not appropriate. Right? The assessment of the auditor is valid, such a matter qualifies to be a key audit matter and hence should be reported accordingly by the auditor in his audit report. Reporting revenue as a key audit matter when the auditor does not have any observation in that area leading to any modification in his report would not be appropriate. So it says only if it is modification then it should come under key audit matter. This being the first year of reporting of key audit matters, the auditor should take a soft stand, huh? soft stand and should avoid reporting such controversial matters in his report. Okay. Right, so no soft stand to be taken over here, not that only when there is a modification you are going to report this, for such a large size company, nothing about such a large size company, right, so the assessment of the auditor is valid, such a matter qualifies to be a key audit matter and hence should be reported accordingly by the auditor in his audit report, okay, wonderful, right, let's come to question number 4. BDJ Limited is engaged in the business of providing the management consultancy services and have been operating for the last or have been in operation for the last 15 years. Right? The company's financial reporting process is very good and its statutory auditors always issued clean audit report on the audit of the financial statements of the company. The auditors were required to be rotated due to mandatory audit rotation requirement of the Companies Act 2013. RNG and Associates, a firm of chartered accountants, was appointed as the new auditor of the company for a term of five years and have to start their first audit for 2019. The auditors had a detailed and clear discussion with the management that they will perform their audit procedures in respect of opening balances along with the audit procedures for 2019. Okay, Management agreed with that and the audit was completed as per the plan. Right. The auditors did not have any significant observation and hence they communicated to the management that their report will be clean. Management was quite happy with this and also requested the auditors to share draft report before issuing the final report. In the draft audit report, all the particulars were fine except other matters paragraph wherein the auditor gave a reference that the financial statements for the comparative year 2018 was audited by another auditor. That is a requirement of 710. Right, audit reporting which we talk of under comparative information when prior period has been audited by predecessor auditor other matter paragraph. Right, the fact that prior period is audited by predecessor auditor type of opinion and the date of report. Management asked the audit team to remove this paragraph as the auditors had performed all the audit procedures on the opening balances also. But the auditors did not agree with the management. Please advise the auditor or the management whosoever is incorrect with the right guidance. Okay. The contention of the management is valid. After performing all the audit procedures, an auditor should not pass on the responsibility to another auditor by including such references in his audit report. Okay. An auditor has two options. See, they have two options. Either to perform the audit procedures on opening balance or giving such a reference to another auditor in his report. An auditor cannot mix up the things like this auditor has done. It is completely unprofessional. What way of drafting. Amazing. In the given situation, even if the auditor wants to give such a reference, the management and the auditor should have taken the approval from the previous auditor at the time of appointment of the new auditor. In this case, it cannot be done. 
the report of the auditor is absolutely correct and is in line with the auditing standards an auditor is required to include such a reference in his report as per the requirements of the auditing standard right so which one do we go for is d right contention of management is valid no it is completely unprofessional no right then what does it say it cannot be done unless and until you take the approval from the previous auditor no right so which is the correct option over here d right the report of the auditor is absolutely correct right coming to question number 5 SKJ Private Limited has an annual turnover of INR 200 crore and profit of 25 crore. The company is engaged in the business of textiles and has fairly stable operations over the years. There has not been much growth in the company in the last few years despite the attempts of the management. Currently the management is more focused towards cost cutting and has been considering all the options to achieve that objective. The statutory auditors of the company have been auditing the financial statements for the last 3 years and have issued clean reports over these years. During 2019 management got a large project from a new customer which resulted in significant increase in the turnover of the company. However, the profitability of the company did not improve much because the margins in the contract were not high. The statutory auditors during the course of their audit for 2019 did not agree with the revenue recognition criteria followed by the company fourth year of audit. Since the matter was significant lot of discussions debates happened with the auditor and the between the auditor and the management but it was finally agreed that the auditors would qualify their audit report. Okay auditors wanted that the management should explain this matter in detail in the notes to account to the financial statements over which the auditors are qualifying the audit report however the management had a different view management said that if the auditor is qualifying his report then why should the management also highlight that matter in the financial statement and hence refuse to include any note for the same because of this conflict audit audit is not getting concluded you are requested to give your view in respect of this matter so that the matter gets concluded okay right it's a real like more of a peacemaker and an arbitrator no you are required to give your views in respect of this matter so that the matter gets concluded so only if and you give your view the matter is going to conclude now right in the given situation if the management does not agree to give a note in the financial statements then the auditor should not hold the audit report however in such a case the auditor would need to give a disclaimer of opinion in in case instead of the qualification the argument of the management seems correct auditor cannot do both the things no generally things is a very untechnical term no so that generally would be the wrong option only that is to qualify and then also get that highlighted in the financial statements that note would not be beneficial for the users of financial statements in case of such matters related to revenue recognition it is always better to give detailed explanation in the notes to account to the financial statements if the explanation is satisfactory then the auditor should also consider giving the emphasis of matter paragraph instead of a qualification okay so this is they give note then you give emphasis no qualification required okay right the requirement of the auditor is beneficial for the company because by giving an explanation of the matter on which auditor has given a qualification in the notes to account the management would be able to <coughs> right explain their perspective point of view to the users of the financial statements in that case auditor while giving the qualification can give reference to the notes to account otherwise the entire matter would form part of the audit report However the auditor should not hold his report if the management does not give it, does not want to give any explanation in the notes to account okay right what is the first one right the management does not agree with the view he should give a disclaimer no 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 right then the note would be would not be beneficial to the users he cannot do both the things no right then what does it say give an emphasis of matter paragraph instead of the qualification if they give a satisfactory note no right so what is the correct option over your d the requirement of the auditor is beneficial for the company okay wonderful coming to question number 6 while conducting the current year audit of finco limited the auditors obtains audit evidence that a material misstatement exists in the prior period financial statements right this misstatement was related to recognition of research and development expenditure the provision of ndas 38 intangible assets relating to capitalization of development expenditure was not applied properly on this unmodified opinion has been previously issued 
the current auditor verified that the misstatement had not been dealt with as required under NDS accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and errors. Accordingly, the current auditor will. Right. So last year there was a modification, but unmodified opinion issued. So again, talking about SA seven one zero. Right. Right. Express an unmodified opinion in the audit report on the current period financial statement since it was related to the prior year. Express a qualified opinion in the audit report on the current period financial statements modified with respect to the corresponding figures included therein. But last year there was an unmodified opinion issued, so it was not reported last year. Express a qualified or an adverse opinion in the audit report on the current period financial statement modified with respect to the corresponding figures included therein. Express an adverse opinion in the audit report on the current period financial statements modified with respect to the corresponding figures included therein. Right. So express an unmodified opinion. No. Right. Express a qualified opinion, qualified or adverse or adverse. Now we don't know whether it is material but not pervasive or material and pervasive. So we are not in a position to say whether qualified or adverse. That is why we say qualified or an adverse opinion. Not only qualified and not only adverse. Right. So express a qualified or an adverse opinion in the audit report on the current period financial statement modified with respect to the corresponding figures included therein. Right, so that completes our question bank for chapter number, uh, the MCQs for chapter number 6. Right, now coming to the chapter number 7. Right, regarding the SEBI LODR. Right, so now coming to the chapter number 7. Right, yes, the audit committee should consist of the following. Right, so now simple, easy, no case study type of questions over here. Right, so BLODR, the audit committee and corporate governance. The audit committee should consist of the following. Minimum of three directors with independent directors forming a majority. Minimum of four directors with only one independent director goes out of question. Only one independent director, no. Minimum two directors which are independent, not, no, not, no such thing mentioned over there. Okay, then minimum five directors with one independent woman directors. No, right. So what is the requirement over there? Minimum three directors audit committee, right? Minimum three members with independent directors forming a majority, right? So what is the correct option over there? A is the correct option. ABC Limited is one of the top 1000 listed entities on the basis of market capitalization. The board of directors of ABC Limited does not comprise of any woman director. Right? The statutory auditors who certifying corporate governance as per SEBI regulations has to ascertain that. The board of directors will have at least two independent women director. The board of directors will have at least one independent woman director. The board of directors will have at least five independent women director. Five independent women director, it will become a kitty party only. And if you have five women directors on the board, the board meeting will take a form of a kitty party in that case. Right? So at least two independent women director, no, none of the above, no. So the board of directors will have at least one independent woman director, right? At least one independent woman director, okay? Then the auditor should ensure that the board of directors of the top 1000 listed entity shall comprise of not less than seven directors, not less than four directors, not less than six directors, not less than two directors, right? So what is the requirement as per SEBI LODR? Not less than six directors, right? Not less than six directors, okay? Annual remuneration payable to a single non-executive director of ABC Limited exceeds 25% of the total annual remuneration payable to all non-executive directors. Right, annual remuneration payable to a single non-executive director of ABC Limited exceeds 25% of the total annual remuneration payable to all the non-executive directors. What is the requirement in SEBI LODR? If it exceeds 50% uh, no, to a single non-executive director, if it exceeds 50% of the total annual remuneration payable to all non-executive directors, then a special resolution is required. In this case, it is exceeding only 25%. That is why there is no requirement for a special resolution. 
Are you understanding? You might just get carried away. Ha! Huh, if it exceeds, and a single non-executive director, if it exceeds, but you have to remember exceeds by what? It's not 25% over there. If you see the theory in your books, it is if it exceeds 50%, then a special resolution is required. Right? So most probably you might end up selecting over your option number A, which is not the correct one. Right? Approval of shareholders by special resolution shall be obtained every year. Approval of shareholders in general meeting may be obtained every year. Approval of board of directors or whether it is not over there, it is C, it is C, none of the above. Why? Because special resolution in the general meeting is required when it exceeds 50% and not when it exceeds the 25%. Right? Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Last one over there. The board of directors of XYZ Limited, one of the top 2000 listed entities, meets at least four times in a year. What should be the quorum of the board meeting of the, for, the quorum of the board of directors from 1st April 2020? Right. So first point is same. One th same. One third of its total strength or three directors. One third of its total strength. That is the common starting point. Or three directors, whichever is higher, including at least one independent director one third of its total strength or four directors whichever is higher higher which includes including at least one independent director one third of its total strength or three directors whichever is higher including at least one two independent directors and one third of its total strength or three directors whichever is higher including at least one non-executive director now again there is no mention of non-executive directors over there right then there is no point over there which says at least two independent directors it says at least one independent directors and it is not one third or four directors but it is one third or three directors so that is why option number a is the correct option one third of its total strength or three directors whichever is higher including at least one independent director so maybe at this point of time looking at this one particular mcq you would have realized that how much detailed study and you know awareness regarding the subject of audit is now required and now because mota mota overall basis you know it but you know at a, you know that is at a macro level you know the concept but at a micro level also very important from the viewpoint of the mcqs and at a macro level, when you know about the concept and you have the writing skills, then you will be able to write the theory part of the paper. But here it is at the micro level. And then, you know, when you, you are not confused. But when you read the options, you start getting confused. And you are very sure that you want to buy a white color shirt today. Okay, but when you, so if the shopkeeper had just shown you different options in the white color shirt, it would have been an easy task for you. But because he showed you white color, blue color, you know, black color and some red color also, that is why now you got confused. You know, originally you were very clear in your mind that I just want a white color shirt. Are you understanding? So very important, read very carefully, line by line and generally when these numbers and all are given, you know, in the chapter of SEBI LODR, okay. Right, so that completes our discussion on the chapter number 7. Now coming to the chapter number 8, right? the audit of the CFS, right? the audit of the consolidated financial statements, right? chapter number 8. Right? MCQs over there, are you all with me? Okay, BCO Private Limited is operating in India for the last 15 years. It has three group companies, one subsidiary in India and two in Ireland and France. All these subsidiaries were acquired one by one and investments were made in the groups gradually. That is initially control was not obtained and after investment for some period control was obtained. The statutory auditors have evaluated that all the group companies are significant for the purpose of the audit of the consolidated financial statements. During 2019, the audited financial statements of all the components are available except for the French company whose audit got delayed and would not get completed before the release date of the consolidated financial statements of the parent company. For the purpose of consolidation, the parent company has provided the audited financial statements of the other components. Please suggest what can be the possible situation in respect of the financial statements of the French company for the purpose of consolidation for the purpose of the audit of the CFS. Right? The French company, what does it say? Right? The audit was not done. 
audit got delayed and would not get complete before the release date of the CFS of the parent company. Since the audit of the French company is in progress, its financial statement subject to audit can be considered by the auditor of the parent company and audited financial statements can be given to the auditor even after the release of the audited financial statements as this is a matter of documentation only. You hurt the ego of the auditor by saying such a sentence that this is a matter of documentation only. The management should give management accounts to the auditor of CFS and the auditors can mention the same point in the other matter paragraph in his audit report which is an acceptable approach. Auditor should get the financial statements of the French company excluded from consolidation. Best, get it excluded from consolidation. If the auditor does not receive the audited financial statements of the French company, he should modify his audit report. Right, he should modify his audit report. Right, so what does point number A and C? So we've already deducted. Right, point number C, the management should give the management accounts. An auditor can mention the same in the other matter paragraph. No, and if the auditor does not receive the audited financial statements of the French company, he should modify his audit report. Wonderful. Right, question number two. KB Limited is engaged in the business of construction. It has multiple subsidiaries and associates in India. The company acquired PPP GmbH in Germany on 1st February 2019. The company also obtained control in PPP GmbH on the same date. Its investments in PPP GmbH was of a huge amount. The company has been preparing its consolidated over the last few years and it has also and this has also become a matter of concern for the company for 2019. The management is of the view that consolidation of PPP GmbH would not be required in the financial statements for 2019 this is because this is the first year of acquisition. However, the auditors have not been agreeing on the same. The timeline for submission of the audited financial statements is due in few months time. In the meantime, the management moved on the consolidation of PPP GmbH, taking audited financial statements of PPP GmbH, which are available in the gap of its local country and gap conversion adjustments from, a lo from its local gap to the Indian gap have been made by the parent company, gap conversion. Right. Gap conversion adjustments are significant at the consolidated financial statements level. In the meantime, the management has also been consulting whether the consolidation would be required or not. Also considering the fact that comparative figures in case of PPP GmbH would not be available. Further, the auditors have also raised observations regarding the gap conversion adjustments over which management has a disagreement. My God, so much of complexity. As for the management, the auditors are not required to comment on the gap adjustment because audited financial statements of PPP GmbH have been given to the auditor. Please help. You will say first you help me, then I will help you. Right? Please help to resolve these matters. Consolidation of PPP GmbH should be done but gap conversion adjustments are not required to be audited. Consolidation of PPP GmbH should not be done and accordingly gap conversion adjustment would not arise. Just chill. Okay, consolidation of PPP GmbH should be done and gap conversion adjustments are also required to be audited. Consolidation of PPP GmbH is a choice of the management as the accounting standard does not mandate this. However, in case it is done, then, then the gap conversion adjustments would be required to be audited. Right, should be done but gap conversion adjustments are not required to be audited. Safed Jhoot, white lie. Consolidation should not be done and the question of conversion adjustment checking will not arise, not right. It is a matter of choice. What does it say? It is a choice of the management, not right. Right. So, which is the correct option over here? C is the correct option. Consolidation of PPP GmbH should be done and gap conversion adjustments are also required to be audited. Wonderful. Right. Coming to question number three. Right. Pay attention. Listen to me. Okay. Right. Yes, when you listen to me, the time will come when the world will listen to you. Okay. You have nothing to say. That is what. You should have nothing to say right now. Let, and you don't say only anything. Let your results say everything. You say, ma'am, what you are telling? Ma'am, let us say something. Are you don't tell only anything right now. You are not in a position. Let us say, na, in case of disclaimer of opinion, we are not in a position and we do not express an opinion. So right now, you are only in a position to study. You are not in a position to say anything. And on the day of the result, when you pass, there is again no need to say anything. But if you don't pass, then you will have to say. 
मैडम ओके नो प्रॉब्लम ठीक है लेट्स कम टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री वी डी एन लिमिटेड इज अ मीडियम साइज कंपनी एंगेज इन द बिजनेस ऑफ रिटेल इट हैज टू सब्सिडरीज एंड वन जॉइंट वेंचर और टूडे आई हैव अगॉटन टू चेक दैट हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर सींग द वीडियो सो फार you are seeing the video no so far many of them they would have started the video then say acha now i'll see it later and then they and then when they are up, they close the arti lahoti youtube channel and then they have some other recommendations come so you know some particular josh talks or you know those ted talks or some arjit singh songs and the recommendations they keep on coming no or something related to stock exchange or some motivation or something ha huh, that video they may end up seeing for next two hours after this you know but now they decided no 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 now i need to do something else okay always distinguish in life between your primary priorities and your secondary interest right and only put channelize all your energy all your what you say thought process only in your primary priorities there is no time in life right now for any secondary things okay VDN Limited is a medium size company engaged in the business of retail. It has two subsidiaries and one joint venture. Both these subsidiaries are larger in size as compared to the parent company. The accounting policies of the parent company, its subsidiaries and the joint ventures were the same. However, for 2019, one of the subsidiary SMA Private Limited changed the method of depreciation of PPE to written down value, which is different from the method followed by the parent company SLM. for the this subsidiary also changed the method of valuation from fifo to weighted average method which has become different from parent as the parent follows the fifo method these changes were made by the subsidiary because it reflected the better picture of the stand alone financial statements now for the purpose of cfs the auditors have asked the management of the parent company to ensure that the accounting policies of the group company should align with that of the parent in line with the requirement of the accounting standard but the management of parent and subsidiary believe that out of the three group companies other than parent only one group company requires this change for the purpose of consolidation and the same should be ignored by the auditors please suggest view of management is correct for cfs method of depreciation of sma private limited may continue to be different however method for valuation of inventory should be aligned with that of the parent for cfs method of valuation of inventory may continue to be different but method of depreciation should be aligned with that of the parent so b and c is you know vice versa the auditor should gauge these changes made in the stand alone financial statements of sma private limited right so having using a different method for depreciation is not a different accounting policy it is a change in the estimate now as per the indas right but inventory valuation the method has to be the same right so view of management is correct not correct auditor should suggest these to get these should get these changes made in the stand alone financial statements may not be possible right so now out of b and c the depreciation can be different but inventory has to be the same or inventory has is same but depreciation can be different right so which is the correct option over here b right depreciation could be different but inventory has to be aligned with that of the parent right is it clear to everyone coming to question number 4 A J Private Limited is engaged in the business of retail, having an annual turnover of rupees eighteen hundred crore. The company has a plan to get listed on the Bombay Stock Exchange next year. The company has three associates, four subsidiaries, and one joint venture. Right? The company prepares its finan consolidated financial statements on a quarterly basis for the purpose for internal purposes. Right? For internal purposes. the quarterly financials are reviewed by the statutory auditors of the company right the group companies of the parent company have increased in terms of their size looking at the total assets and revenue of the group for the purpose of the audit of the cfs for 2019 management has requested the statutory auditors that it would be able to provide management certified accounts of the joint venture as its audit would not get completed on time and even without joint venture the auditors would be able to cover 75% of the total assets of the group at the consolidated level okay however the statutory auditors are insisting that they need to cover at least 80% of the total assets of the group at consolidated level as per the requirement of the auditing standard and for that the financial statements of the joint venture should also be audited please advise okay auditor should accept the management certified accounts of the joint venture 
auditor cannot accept the management certified accounts of the joint venture and should report the matter to the ROC. So now who they are making the culprit over here? ROC. Okay. Auditor cannot accept management certified accounts of joint venture and should report the matter to the SEBI considering the plan to get listed next year. Oh, so now they are saying go to ROC, go to SEBI. Auditor should accept management certified accounts of the joint venture provided that the revenue of the joint venture is less than 10% of the total revenue of the group. We have nowhere studied some any provision like this. Okay. So now if you are convinced with the three wrong answers, even that is a way to find out the correct answer. Did you listen to my sentence carefully? If you are convinced with the three wrong answers, ultimately you finalize the one right answer. So what are they saying? Tell to ROC. Yeah? Should report the matter to ROC. Report the matter to the SEBI. If it is less than 10% of revenue, then it is okay. No, 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 no. Right? So which is the correct option over here? A. Auditors should accept the management certified accounts of the joint venture. Right? Auditors should accept. Right? Coming to the next one. Question number 5. Adwik Limited is an unlisted public company. The company acquired few companies in the last 3-4 years which have been assessed as its subsidiaries associate joint venture year and after jointly called as the components. The company prepares its condensed consolidated financial statements every quarter to review the performance of the group. In the past year, right. Right. In the past years, the company used to get the financials of its components reviewed audited on a quarterly basis. AJ and Company LLP is the statutory auditor of the parent company and KSH and Associates is the statutory auditor of all the component. Quarterly condensed consolidated financial statements of the group are reviewed by the statutory auditors as per the terms of the engagement letter. AJ and company LLP has communicated to Adwik Limited that in line with the requirements of the Companies Act 2013, it would also be required to undertake audit limited review of all the components which would be consolidated with those of Adwik Limited and for which KSH and company associate, KSH and associates are the statutory auditors currently. Management is not agreeing with the view as they don't want to change KSH and associates as auditor of the component and the requirement mentioned by AJ and company LLP would lead to duplication of work of auditors as well as the management. Please advise. In an audit review of consolidated financial statements, whether condensed or complete, the principal auditor is required to perform various procedures in accordance with SA 600 and hence the requirement of the auditor is valid. In an audit review of consolidated financial statements, the principal auditor is required to perform various procedures in accordance with the requirements of company accounts and audit rules 2014 and hence the requirement of the auditor is valid. No, no, why bringing company accounts audit rules into the picture? Okay, right, next one. In an audit review of consolidated financial statements, whether condensed or complete, the principal auditor is not required to re-perform audit limited review of the component and hence the requirement of the auditor is not correct. And management and the auditor needs to decide this mutually as this is based on the contractual agreement between them. So they can decide mutually. No, no mutual discussion over here. Right. So now what is the options left? A and C. Right. What is the A option? In an audit review of consolidated financial statements, the principal auditor is required to perform the various procedures in accordance with SA 600. So you need to apply SA 600 whenever you are using the work of the component auditor. Okay. And in an audit review of consolidated financial statements, the principal auditor is not required to re-perform the audit limited review of the component and hence the requirement of the auditor is not correct. Right, so if you look at the answer which has been given by ICAI over here, right, the answer over there says C. Okay, so as per ICAI, if I go into this point over here, maybe that the point of time which it was prepared, it talks about C. But now if you look into the chapter of the company auditor, you know, if you're sorry, the SEBI LODR, which talks about the limited review, right, so it talks about the limited review of the components. Right, so if I come to that particular heading in the book, right, just give me a moment. 
right there is a heading over there you know in the books in the chapter of sebi lod are limited review of components right limited review of audit of all the entities whose accounts are required to be audited by, consolidated with the listed entity the statutory auditor of a listed entity shall undertake a limited review of audit of all the entities companies whose accounts are to be consolidated with the listed entity as per as and as in accordance with the guidelines issued by sebi on this matter right so now it says that the auditor of the cfs is required to do the audit right of all these subsidiaries which are to be included in the consolidation right so probably there would have been some earlier point of time when this question would have been prepared so what ideally how c should be the correct answer is in an audit review of consolidated financial statements the principal auditor is required to reperform do the audit limited review of the component and hence the requirement of the auditor is correct right that is how you need to change the point right so sometimes it do happens don't get very confused okay in the exams whatever is the latest provision accordingly you can apply right human error tolerable rate of deviation tolerable misstatement applicable for everyone so no you know you just need to take it with a pinch of salt okay right so which would be the option over here c would be the option okay right so that completes our discussion on the chapter number 8 right so right from chapter number 1 up to 8 we have already seen right so you can continue having a look at the other mcqs right which we have not covered in this particular discussion maybe at some later point of time i'll also upload the yes video for the same on youtube okay thank you very much and i wish you all 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 the very very best for the preparation for your exams right do well in your exams thank you